everyone, this is Mike from Make School here, and this is part two of our Dog Years Calculator video. Uh, this is the tutorial that uh, comes with Swift CSP. Um, so, if you haven't seen the first video, go ahead and stop this video. Work through that one first. Uh, you'll build the app just as I have here. Um, part one focuses on building the app. Part two, what we're doing now, is going to be focused on debugging the app. So, let's get started. So, um, we successfully built our dog years calculator here, and if I enter uh, an age here, let's say my dog is 14 human years old, I get the good picture of an old dog, I see he's 98, great. If I change it back to 1, if he's, uh, I believe the cutoff is 40 dog years, we see uh, this adorable puppy. Cool, but there are some problems. So, for instance, if I leave it empty on the text field, I get an error. My app crashes, and that's bad. I run it again here, and there's another error we have to worry about, too. So, right now, the user has access to the full keyboard. They could literally put anything. So, let's say I put an emoji, I put a letter, I put anything but a number, we get the same crash. So, today we're going to do some defensive coding. We've built the app before, and we've taken the, the uh, usual process you do when building an app. Um, first thing we do is we hustle and we make it work. We build the thing so that it does the thing that it should for users who use it correctly. The users that want to use it correctly enter a dog's age, get the right answer back. That's perfect. But now that we've handled that, we also have to think about what about the people who use our app incorrectly, either on accident or even on purpose? We need to make sure that our app isn't so fragile that they could just enter the wrong thing or accidentally touch the button and it crashes. One, Apple won't let it on the App Store um, if there's bugs like that, if you could crash the app. Uh, and two, it looks bad and users won't use your app. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's figure out why our app is crashing here. Uh, and the best way to do that uh, is to crash it. So let's do something we know will make it crash. We're going to hit calculate with an empty field, and Xcode will actually tell us at what line exactly the error happens. So we can see here um, that it says a bunch of stuff that you're not going to understand. Thread 1, bad instruction, all that. Um, that doesn't help us. But down here in the debugger, this does. So the last thing we'll see here is right here, fatal error. That's what you're looking for. Unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. Perfect. Today we're going to talk about nil, we're going to talk about optionals, and we're going to look at real-world scenarios where you'd see them and figure out how to write code to protect us from them here. The last thing I'll point out over here is, um, before we get to actual coding here, I'm going to make this bigger, and you can actually see um, so all the objects right now and what their values are. And we can see right here that... Um, we have the years constant we have here um, returns nil. So this tells us something. We can do some detective work. Well, years is nil, and that's okay. Years is allowed to be nil. That's okay. But when we try and use it right here on this line, we have nil times 7. Well, that's where our error is, okay? So this is the, the pretty common thing here. You don't need to worry about all this stuff. I don't know why they include it. Not necessary. But this error message is actually very useful for us. And we can do some detective work on the left side here and figure out, oh, this is what's going on. All right, so we've identified the problem. So let's look at why years is nil. Well, years is an optional value. And we can see that it's optional because there's a question mark at the end of it. So, optionals come from, um, so we're getting an optional back from this function call right here. Um, optionals are Swift's way of handling a nil value. So before we talk about uh, what nil is, or before we handle nil, let's talk about what it is. Nil is not the same as zero. Okay. What is nil? Nil is undefined. Okay.
okay? And this is an important concept to get. Uh, this isn't just a Swift thing. This is a computer science thing. This is something that everybody that works in computer science with is comfortable with here. Um, so they may use a different term for it. For instance, in Python, it would be none. In Java, it would be null. But it always means the same thing. If it helps you think of it like this, um, understand that it's not the same as zero because you can do math with zero. A computer can do zero times seven. That's zero. That's an easy one. A computer cannot do undefined times zero. Okay? So undefined, um, you've seen this before. Undefined would be like when you try to divide something by zero. You learn early in math that you can't do that. It's not possible. It's an undefined answer. Um, you could also think of it as infinity. For instance, what is infinity times seven? Well, that doesn't make sense. There's no such thing as seven infinity. That doesn't work with the concept of infinity, so it's undefined. So, any time that you can't do the math in your head, well, the computer certainly can't either in that respect there. Um, not because the number's too big, but because it's simply not possible. Okay? Um, so, let's figure out the harder thing, which is why this is happening. We understood what was happening. We have a nil value when we aren't expecting it. And when we try and do something to the nil value... You can't touch nil, whole app blows up in your face. So, let's figure out what's happening. Well, as we talked about in the previous video, we called this function, right? We called int. Int is a function call. And we passed in this value right here, okay? Um, and what this happens here is this says, I'm going to take whatever's inside of here, okay? In this case, user input text fields dot text. Um, and it's going to say, if this can become an integer, I'm going to turn it into an integer. It expects a string. String could be any symbol. This is uh, something we covered uh, in the Xcode Playgrounds. Um, so that string data type could be any symbol. It could be the symbol for the number 7, okay, which isn't the same as the number 7. But it's enough for this int function here to take what's inside of it and say, oh, if it's the string version of 7, go ahead and change it into the integer version of 7. If it's the string version of 2, change it to the integer version of 2, so on and so forth. Now, this returns an optional because, well, wait, what about hap what happens when they enter something that isn't uh, something that could be turned into a number? For instance, the letter Z. Okay, well, there is no numerical equivalent to Z, right? There is no numerical equivalent to an emoji. So it just throws up its hands, and the function says, I quit. I don't know what to do with this. Here is a nil value. It's its way of saying, I failed. I couldn't do it, okay, um, because it's impossible. So we're storing that all the same here, and it's wrapped up, as we can see by the question mark, um, in an optional value. So what is an optional value? Well, optionals are cool, okay? Optionals are Swift's way of saying this value, this variable, excuse me, this variable could contain a value. Values on the right side. But it could also contain nil. And herein lies our problem. Okay? So Swift handles this by kind of wrapping them up. You can think of this as in like, you know, think of nil as like it's radioactive. You don't want to touch it. Um, so you need it. You need it packaged up in this little lead lined box. And an optional is that box itself here. And here we take the lid off the box with an exclamation point and we say, reach on in there and grab what you see and multiply it by seven. Um, and we touch nil and things crash. So we need to find a way to peek inside our optional and say, hey, if this isn't nil, do some stuff. But if it is, do nothing. Okay? So. Let's think about how we can do this. And this is actually a pretty cool way to do this. Uh, we're going to use something called optional binding. We're going to create a variable called years. If and only if this returns a value that is not nil. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to say if years, uh, excuse me, we're going to say if let years equals all that up here. And then whatever's after this here, okay, I guess I could just change this here. 
I'm going to add if right there. Um, so what this is saying is um, this is saying something special to the Swift compiler. Uh, it says, hey, I want you to bind this variable uh, to this value on the right side if and only if that value isn't nil. So this is cool um, because other languages can't do this. You're basically saying create this variable if and only if you peek over here and everything's cool. And then we run a code block after it. And I'm going to add a closing guy down there. Everything's good. Now what's happening is I'm saying, hey, go ahead and run this function call here. This will resolve. It'll either return an integer or it'll return nil. The Swift compiler will then go, okay, this equals nil or this does not. And if it equals nil, it won't bind this at all. So nothing in the code block will run. But let's talk about the success case. So yes, it creates it, it binds it. Well, one thing that's really cool is if I use years inside of this here, I'm going to indent everything so it looks a little more readable. It's now unwrapped by default. So I have optionally bound this here, and now this isn't an optional. Okay, now this is just a regular int. You can see the question mark has disappeared. So I don't have to unwrap it with that. Now that's just great. Okay, now let's go ahead and run our app and see if things work. Here we are. Okay, moment of truth. I click calculate. It doesn't crash. I go inside of here, and let's say I enter something like D. It still doesn't crash. Don't. Nothing. Okay? So, that's good. We've protected it here. But, there's still a problem. From a purely mathematical standpoint, our code, it works. Great. But, this isn't very useful to the user, because they could be entering it, and they don't understand why it's not working. Okay? We should, enter, uh, we should show some sort of error message. And better yet, there's never an instance where they'll need to enter in any sort of letters, let alone emojis. Um, so, what we should be doing uh, is only giving them a numerical keypad. So, we've done two things here. One, we've used some programming to protect ourselves from nil. But the other thing we're going to do is we're going to be smart with design. And we're going to say, if they don't need it, let's not even give them the option. And that's another way to make sure you're, you're coding defensively and you're making sure your app doesn't break real easily. So, let's do one at a time. First thing we'll do here, this is simple. I'm going to close the debugger so I have more room here. I'm going to click on the text field. And I'm going to go, you guessed it, to the Attributes Inspector, as we did before. And you notice here, if I scroll down, you actually take the time to read everything. There's some real cool stuff. Keyboard type is what I'm looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is just a number pad. Now, they won't be able to enter in any sort of um, uh, letters. It'll only be the keypad. Okay, uh, and let's compile it real quick here. I did Control R. You can also click Play, and we'll test that it works. So now, when we click on our text field, I should see a different kind of keypad here. It should only allow numbers. Yes, success, and the app still works. All right, cool. Now, the second thing we need to do here is we need to say, all right, when there's nothing. In this, so if this code never runs, um, there they click on the calculate button here, um, and this code it gets to right here. This returns nil, so this is never created. So everything in this code block, everything from here to here, never runs because this is never created. So if this code never runs, they never get any sort of message. So, we have to think, maybe some of our dumber users could sit there clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking, and they have no idea why it's not working. So, simple solution. If they use it correctly, all this code runs, they get what they want. But if they don't, let's show them an error message. Okay? So, 
outside of our if let block. You have to make sure it's the right code block. I'm not outside of the function. If you notice, I'm still inside the function. This one controls the function here. Um, but I'm going to be at the end of the if let statement. I'm going to say else. I'm going to add that next code block here. And let's just go ahead and we'll take the text of the, the label that we created and change it to an error message. So we'll say dog age label dot text equals, we create a string, and we say error. You must enter a number. Moment of truth, let's build it, and if this works, we are done. Okay, we click on this. We don't enter anything. Error, you must enter a number. Nothing crashes. Let's go ahead and say, okay, now I can still use it. That changes. I can still use it. That changes. I try it from here, and I'm just trying every specific situation. Um, so that's great. Okay, um, so we are done. Now, um, just like any programming job, you're never really done because there's always ways you could make it better. So if you're looking to, to kind of stretch your skill set here, I would challenge you to look up, maybe we could use some sort of alert um, where you have to tap OK for this error message. That definitely gets the user's attention. Um, maybe you could also say, uh, OK, when there's an error, maybe I want to hide the picture. Um, or I want to show an error picture, um, something like that. Uh, maybe you could get different ages of dogs and make this bigger um, and and say, well, if it's a puppy, if it's under 10 years, 10 dog years old, and, you know, get dogs at different stages of their life. Uh, so feel free to play around with this app uh, and take what you've learned and, one, make this cool, but, two, also build on it. What you've done here is foundational. This will go into any app. Um, you know how to use optionals now to protect against uh, no values in, in all this here. So you're in a good spot. You now understand how to create an app, how to use auto layout and interface builder to lay things out, how to mess with specific attributes, like for instance, the numpad, how to create outlets and actions and what the difference is between them. And finally, how to connect all those outlets and actions to your code and use all that cool computer science theory you've learned to actually do something that matters with it and make this app do what you want. Okay? Uh, thank you so much, and uh, stay tuned for more of our videos as we walk you through some other cool tutorials. Thanks!